Hello and welcome to the very first Parapod episode of 2024, yeah. episode 130. Episode 130, a, n- a nice round number. Finally back to even numbers. To start off the <laughs> new year, finally. <laughs> it's been too long. <laughs> I, mean, I, I feel satisfied when it's even numbers. Even numbers and tens. And, div- yeah. and divisible by five. Oof. Yeah, odds are always. Like, this is a bad. This is gonna be a bad episode. Yeah, no, yeah. This is, this is <laughs> bad vibes in this one. <laughs> Ew, it's a seven. <laughs> yeah, there's always Even like. I think seven's meant to be a lucky number. S- is is it? I think it is. Is seven meant to be? The lucky? Chinese think eight is, is lucky, isn't it? Is seven. Oh, lucky we're fucking number? nowhere near that number. Wait, <laughs> lucky number eleven. Remember that? Remember that film? Eleven. Look it up. Lucky number eleven. It had Morgan <laughs> Freeman and stuff in it. Sl- what the fuck is eleven? I don't know. Some kind of pun. It wasn't, it, but it wasn't a pun because it just misspelled seven. I don't. I mean, it was something to do with the film. I never watched the film, but it was on. Oh yeah. There was like uh, also known as the wrong man in Australia. That's an even worse title somehow. <laughs> <laughs> How did they come up with those two titles separately? Uh, I remember it was on TV. Bruce Willis is in this movie. Ben Kingsley. Aver- Lou. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's Stanley Tucci. I've yeah, never heard of this it film. It was being advertised <laughs> constantly on TV for like a year in 2007 or 2008, whatever fuck it was released. 2006 it came out. Ah. Uh, that's my next guess. <laughs> it is a movie worth the time to watch. That's what I am. Wow, that's says. such a great endorsement. <laughs> yeah, no, it's worth the time to watch. <laughs> you haven't completely wasted your time by watching this film. Yeah. Okay. Your life won't be better or worse. Like, you'll have spent time well. Uh, ambient film. Yeah. I, I like that, you know. B- film in the background. Yeah, just, <laughs> just film you can watch. And you can leave on the background while you do your laundry or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's a perfect, like, chores movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Unlike our recommended film for this episode, Be My Cat, a film for Anne, 2015, directed by Adrian Tovey. I'm going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Tovey. But Tofi, I don't, yeah. I, I don't think that's how you pronounce his name. We're gonna stick. That's the canonical pronunciation of the name. Yeah, from here on out. On, on the parapod, that we've canonically ne- called him that. Yeah, we've christened him that. Um, but we will get onto that later on. Mark, it's a new year. How are you feeling? I'm feeling the exact same as I felt last year. Yeah, I feel exactly. Yep, exactly the same. I haven't noticed it, but I have changed in many, many ways. Um, yeah, it's been grand. I had, had, a, had a grand old festive period. Had a lot of time off mm-hmm. that I wouldn't usually have had. Um, a lot of time to relax. Slept so much. Yeah, it's important. Overslept. Then I was up at my mom's house and I came back down. First night, barely slept a wink. It was just, I was I was like a zombie for the next two or, two or three days. I only just recovered from that. So, yeah, it's grand. How, 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 was, your, how was your New Year's? Oh, good. Yeah. Chill. Puzzle, same. Yeah. Didn't do much. Watch the nice guys with the family. Nice guys is a movie. It was a decent movie. No, yeah, it's yeah. only decent. A good movie. You were saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Surprisingly good movie. But I'm not talking about that movie because <laughs> it's not interesting to talk about. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's too alright. Yeah, it's no, it's it's just like it's too good. It's just good in every way. Yeah, you know, it's just like yeah, that's a good movie. Mm. Nothing more to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah, I tell you, New Year. I'm turning 25 this year. Frontal lobe is fully forming. Let me tell you. Yeah, it really it does make a difference when you turn twenty five. Like you suddenly you start like, it's like uh, Bradley Cooper in that film, you know, where he takes the pill, and then all of a sudden limitless, limitless. Yeah. It's like that, you know. You suddenly you see the world, you see your future ahead of you. You're fully developed, and suddenly you know everything. Do you know why? Okay, so you know when people say when you hit thirty, you don't feel like you're thirty, mm. and when you're forty, you don't like, feel like you're forty. Yeah, that has to do, apparently. That has to do with your frontal lobe development. What does that mean? So when you're obviously a kid and you get older, every year feels different. Like you feel like you're getting older. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I still feel like that is still kind of happening, but now I'm realizing I'm 25. It's slowing down. Like the the developments between year to year mm. are very minimal. Yeah, yeah. And that, that has to do apparently with your frontal lobe forming, mm. fully developing. Now I can no longer be like... Because like you know when you, you know when you're like in your early twenties or something like that, and you're working somewhere, and a mom or dad says to a kid, "Oh, watch the man" or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, "Fuck, twenty five. That is, like that is ma- that is a man." <laughs> yeah, you're the man now. Ugh. Watch the man. No one's ever said that to me, but like, I, theoretically, yeah, uh, legally, I could be the man. You know, <laughs> from a legal point of view. Have you have you never heard someone be like, "Oh, careful of the man" or you know something like that to a kid? 
Oh, yeah, I've heard it, yeah. yeah. No, no one's ever said to me. Not no, yet. no, no, no. Like, I'm never Maybe like, when I'm 26. I've never, I've never been like, you're the man. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, watch. It's the man. <laughs> I, I can't remember the first time that happened to me, but I think I was in like 19, 20 ish. Mm. And someone, like, again, a parent being like to a kid, oh, careful of the man, or whatever the fuck they said, like, mm. referred to me as a man, and my insides shriveled up when I heard that. I was like, that is disgusting. Don't ever reference me as the man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or a man. Don't don't recognize me as being uh, an adult, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The boy. Yeah. The what's, kid. What's that? What's that? Youngfla. The guy. Yeah, youngfla. Yeah, yeah. No, it is weird. It's it's yeah. Less change. Like if between like say like eighteen, twenty one. How much does is your 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 years are different from like always going to be different from year to year. Mm-hmm. It's like now it's like we're kind of doing the same thing, yeah, for years at a time, and then maybe you'll change, then be a big change, and you'll be like, Oh, fucking hell, this is huge. Yeah, but it used to happen every few months, yeah, like your big change. Like now, I mean, what are like big changes? Like your first pube is pretty big, but <laughs> first pube, yeah, I don't remember that now, voice cracking and stuff like that. But now, yeah, yeah. now it's just like, What are big changes? Oh, uh, I'm gonna move out, Ooh, I'm gonna buy a gaff, Ooh, I'm gonna get married, like, yeah, I suppose they're, they're bigger in scale, yeah. definitely, yeah. The responsibility of them is much larger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to buy a gaff. Thankfully, that will never come. Oh, thank so God, I don't have to worry about we that. We don't have to deal with that change. <laughs> <laughs> no worries about that here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not at all. But no, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be, well, yeah, we're, what, two months away. We'll have our joint birthdays. Oh, yeah, collective joint, birthday. Our collective birthday month. Um, Be good, you know. Well, yeah, we also feel the exact same. Yeah, no, feel the exact fucking same. Any any New Year's resolutions? No, no, I don't do that really. Do that? No. Do my, my one is to use the ice bath that I bought. Yeah, I seen that in your story. What's that? What's that? What's that all about? Is that outside? Yeah, it's outside the yeah. back. Let me tell you, man. Like, where did you where did you get that? Like Amazon. <laughs> where you you ordered like a giant tub? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how did how did they deliver that? Because it was a uh, it was like how much packed? was it? Uh, hundred and twenty. Twenty. That's actually fairly reasonable. Yeah, yeah. you know, for something that yeah, just you know, for a big, big yoke. Yeah. Um, surpri- I was surprised that it was like, because I'm not sure the exact measurements of it, but um, like it can fit a lot of water into that thing and fit me into it perfectly. Yeah, how much water can you fit? How, how big is it? Like, uh, so if I like like sit down and legs crossed, the water goes up to my over my shoulders. Mm. Um. I don't know how many liters that is, but it's <laughs> it's like and there's enough room, like plenty of room, <laughs> enough for two. Mark, you want to get in with me? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> um, yeah, because I I was using. <laughs> I'm gonna start ranting out your spot. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because they say like we recommend like three to five days change the water. I ain't fucking doing that. That's <laughs> that took way too much time to fucking fill up. That's a massive waste of water. Yeah, no, it actually days. is. I'm doing that. But what I'm doing the so- assignment of that right now. That's a huge waste of water. <laughs> like, what, what's wrong with the water? The like, what's gonna happen to the like? You seal it surely after you get out. Or you just let it, just let it fester in the elements. Well, no, you put a co- I put like uh, there's like a, an, an inflatable cover that I put on it, and then there's like a rain cover that I put on top of that. Mm. I don't know because you're like stagnant water, but like unaffected by like there's not flies and shit landing on it or anything. Like that. That's not like yeah. animals are getting They're in there to buy you. Yeah. yeah, it's not like it's really warm and the water's gonna you know turn into soup or anything like that. Like yeah, yeah. Like, maybe just slosh it around every now and then. Yeah, you know? it's like a big shtick. <laughs> <laughs> On to back, stirring his water again. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make it cold. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go faster. <laughs> faster. Need to turn into jacuzzi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any minute now, we're gonna get a tidal wave effect. Is it, uh, does it, does it work? Does, like, does it have the, I know the... I hear that it gives you greater kind of like energy. Oh man, yeah, full on. Really? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent it does. Yeah, really. Like the absolute worst part is the bit before you get into the water. Then it's, it's like the fear. Yeah, the fear, like being like, yeah. oh, this is me cold. This is me cold. Then when you're in it, you're just like, ah, like this is cold, but it is manageable. Mm. Um, and then I sit in it for about two minutes. Then I get up, and then I'm freezing fucking cold because I actually think it's colder <laughs> outside the water than inside the water yeah, r- yeah. right now. Um, then you know, let myself warm up a little bit, and then I go and have a shower. Uh, a, a warm shower. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, man. I'm having a cold <laughs> shower. <laughs> fuck cold, my foot. Fucking that. Bear grills. <laughs> no, 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 no. Fuck that. I drink a pint of my own piss. Yeah. <laughs> I get ready for the day. <laughs> Snort my dry skin. You know? uh, yeah. No, it's definitely like that's. 
I aim to uh, tomorrow is gonna be the the hardest one because I mm. want to do it in the morning when the water's coldest, and I'm in work tomorrow, so that means I have to get into that thing at about seven o'clock, half six, seven o'clock. I'm gonna, f- that's gonna kill me, bro. A.M. Yeah. Fuck. That yeah, that is, that's intense. Like, what what time do you usually get in then? Around half eight or nine. This is pretty cold. It's still. I I I bought a thermometer to put in t- to like <laughs> check the water every, every time. It's not ready. Because yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh, like I wonder if it's gonna be like too hot or anything like that. Apparently, uh, an I like a an ice bath is anywhere between zero and fifteen degrees. But I feel like fifteen degrees is pretty f- like warm. I feel like it, like I don't associate fifteen degrees with ice. <laughs> I think you well, you could you could probably float ice in it, but then it would dissolve. Yeah, probably. But like zero degree. Ice bath, isn't that just a fucking block of ice? Yeah, it's turning into a <laughs> block of ice. Anyway. <laughs> My ice bath. It froze. <laughs> Gotta wait for the towel. <laughs> Fuck. It's not stirring anymore. <laughs> is is that like an issue? Is that like is there like a manual for like? No, I just googled. I was like wondering because like it's like, at. Like, how do you protect against that? Oh, uh, protect against the freezing. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. There's a guy on TikTok who does like daily ice baths and shit like that. He's been doing it for like over a year now, mm. and he lives in Milwaukee, I think. So during like the the winter months, he comes out to his ice bath, has a dumbbell, and smashes the dumbbell onto the ice to break the ice on top of it. Uh, yeah, I swear it wouldn't freeze solid here. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. And even at that, sometimes when he smashes the, the ice with the dumbbell, the dumbbell does not break the ice. <laughs> it bounces. <laughs> um, uh, but that's how, like, and then he measures the water, like, measures the temperature, and it's one degrees in the water. Because, um, mm. yeah, I think, surely if it was, if the if all the ice was below zero degrees, all it, like, all the ice, if all the water was below zero degrees, it would all freeze. Just be ice, yeah. Yeah, so... Obviously, I don't know. How cold does it have to be for, like, a block of water to freeze all the way through? Cold. Yeah. Cold as fuck, I'd say. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like a 15-liter block of water. That's a weird way to describe it, but let's just yeah, describe yeah, it like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, no, block of water. Like, it had to be... I suppose it'd be its, it's time scale as well, isn't mm. it, you know? It's like maybe if, if you're in fucking Norway in the middle of winter and you're left outside, you'll probably freeze over after a day or two. Yeah. Probably. I don't know. Yeah, probably. I feel like. I feel like, yeah. I but don't here, know. Like, it gets cold, but it's only cold for like five or six hours. Yeah. And then it's like, it's cold, but it's not like freezing. Yeah, it's, like, not, li- it's, it's not, not literally freezing. It's not literally freezing. Yeah, cold, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, tomorrow, I measured it today. I got into it at about half eight, and it was six degrees. The rest of the day, it's been, the rest of the time we've been using it, it's seven degrees. It's going to be like five degrees when I get into that water tomorrow. I'm going to fucking end my life <laughs> before I get into that. Do you feel like the dagger's going into your like legs and oh. stuff? Oh, yeah. yeah, like you're like when I get out of it, I can feel my. Ha- it's more so my hands. My hands go like completely numb. Yeah, like you can't grasp anything. Yeah, like I can feel the tingling and stuff like that. Yeah, that's the problem with like because I got into the shower relatively quickly after the first one. I was like, oh, don't do that. I can feel like when you hop into the hot water, it like you feel it hurts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. That's some. I I get that in my gaff sometimes. You know. I was just freezing. We haven't turned on, or yeah. I've been home all day. Haven't turned on the heat and could be because it'd be a waste. You know, get get to night time. It's fucking. I can see my breath in the air. Just mm. like walking around the gaff. Get to night time. Hop in the shower and like it's just it's just like it feels like if it's almost it's almost better outside in the cold <laughs> than it is like inside the shower. It's yeah, like the, the differential. Yeah, you can. F- yeah, I feel like you can. F- you feel how cold you are once you get into hot water. <laughs> mm, mm. Um, I <laughs> in the when I was in uh fucking westwood um i said to flan one of the times because you, you can't you can't go from like a sauna into like an ice bath like too quickly because you can give your body shock yeah, yeah. so like you're meant to like if you're using a sauna or something like that you're not you're meant to like cool down slightly and then you can get into like cold water mm. <laughs> I, just, I was going to him like i don't know why my body would go into shock i'm expecting it <laughs> yeah what the hell yeah what the fuck buddy i told <laughs> you i was about to do this <laughs> Yeah, you might get shocked. Yeah, the the just prepare in advance. Imagine, imagine going to a shock in a fucking spa. Yeah, in Westwood. Yeah, that'd be fucking like, embarrassing. Getting carried out by an ambulance. Yeah, like that's just 
or like whatever they'd wrap like the little uh, tin foil thing over you I saw someone have that happen to them at the beach before at the beach yeah I was Doing in uh, the fuck was I I think it was somewhere in Spain or something like that and um, I think they fell asleep in the sun mm. and they were just oh. sun stroke two bits yeah, yeah yeah like just like basically on the verge of dying <laughs> yeah yeah um, very easy thing to do. Sunstroke. Sunstroke. That's that'll that's, fuck that's, you up. Yeah, that definitely doesn't give you energy. <laughs> oh, definitely not. <laughs> definitely fucking not. I'm, I'm sun maxing. It's a it's a new uh, body hack. New <laughs> 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 Stare I, at the sun. Yeah, I'm giving my body all these extremes. You know, I'm I'm toughening up. <laughs> yeah, you sit in an ice bath and stare at the sun for 20 minutes. It's like, and then I get out and I'm ready to attack the day, and be an alpha male. That's what I'm going to try. My balls are fucking huge because <laughs> of this. He <laughs> just says cancer like. He yeah. <laughs> <laughs> says terminal ball cancer. Yeah, I'll tell you fucking hell. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's, I was going to make a segue into nuclear energy, but I'm not going to do that. I watched Godzilla Minus <laughs> 1. Yeah, it could have been done. It could have been done. Godzilla Minus 1. It's tastefully done, but it could have been done. Yeah. Okay, I saw the new Godzilla movie. Godzilla minus one. This is the first Godzilla movie since... Well, Japanese Godzilla movie since Shin Godzilla. Mm. I think. I'm going to go on a limb and say that. I think I'm correct in saying that. Um, and people are raving about this movie. Raving about this movie. Saying that like this is the best Godzilla movie since... If not Shin Godzilla, which... Th- like well, it's the one that came out after, directly after. Okay, um, but uh, the original Godzilla. So they're like, this is you know top three Godzilla movies, right? You know, top five Godzilla movies of all time. So I was excited for this, mm. and a lot of people are talking about like the human element in this film is really like surprisingly good. And I was like, ah, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, yeah, no, it actually properly is. The human element in this movie is why you should go see this movie. Mm. Um like Godzilla's fucking sick in it. Godzilla maybe the best atomic breath by Godzilla in any movie. I haven't I've seen a lot of Godzilla movies. Mm. I haven't seen nearly half of them. I think I've seen maybe a quarter of the Godzilla movies that are out and I've seen That's a lot. I've seen about fifteen Godzilla movies, I think. Fifteen? Uh, no, maybe fifteen. I've definitely seen over ten. Jesus. Yeah. I, I didn't know you'd watch that many. Oh yeah, I've seen I've seen I've seen quite a few. You've done your time. Yeah. Um and like so with this Godzilla movie it is slightly different in terms of its set. So the opening of the scene is set during World War 2. Um fighter pilot comes in, lands on this island and he's a kamikaze pilot and they're like um he's like oh my my sh- my my aircraft is damaged. Please repair it. And they start looking at the ship and they or the ship the the plane, that's the word for it. And they're like, oh, there's nothing wrong with the plane. We can't find any faults with it. So then, therefore, you know, oh, he's a kamikaze pilot. That is, he hasn't committed. He's too afraid yeah, yeah, yeah. to die for his country. Um, And so he spends the night there, resting up, whatever. And Godzilla attacks. Like, straight away, Godzilla just attacks. But Godzilla is really small. When I say Godzilla is really small, Godzilla is still fucking huge, yeah. but it's not Godzilla yet. How big is he? Um, probably this. Uh, How many ice baths tall is this man? At least fifty. <laughs> so pretty big. Like I would say, probably the size of like a three or four story house. All right. Like a big fucker you still be shocked actually no way bigger than that like a big fucker yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how big I don't know how big it, like feet it's meant to be I'm gonna say about like 40 feet yeah 30 40 feet um, and so it attacks people die the pilots and some other one other dude are the only survivors and they get taken they get found and <clears throat> you know brought to safety or whatever and he's like Nah, something fucked up happened on that island. And no one really believes him. But he comes back home and the he lives in like kind of near Tokyo or in Tokyo. I can't remember exactly. I think it's, yeah, I think it's in Tokyo. And Tokyo is decimated after the war. And finds this girl that has found this baby, starts to raise the baby. 
And then it shows us like, you know, a couple of years go by, whatever. The war has ended and it shows a montage of America experimenting with nuclear weapons. And Godzilla, who was already a big fucker, gets blasted with radiation. And then Godzilla comes back. And Godzilla is fucking huge now. Mm. Like, we got proper Godzilla now. Goes on a tear. And then the people have to fight back against Godzilla. But, like, this film is about <coughs> sacrifice. It's about love. It's about the idea of needlessly dying for your nation. Because mm. it's just, like, there's, like, a, there's a scene where, like, there's a band of like ex soldiers and stuff all together, and they're they've kind of see themselves as somewhat dishonorable because they didn't die during the war. Mm-hmm. And then another character, like at a sort at another stage, is like there's no more point of needlessly dying. Like I don't want anyone to risk their life trying to defeat Godzilla because that is pointless. Because we need we need to move on as a nation mm. from like what we did during the war. And so it's about it's all about that type of stuff, mm-hmm. and this the human element just really hits in this movie, like really hits in this movie. Yeah, ending that's... line is fucking awful because it's like the ending line is essentially like, "Did you get the theme of the movie?" <laughs> like it just it just says the it just theme. says it says it again, and just like what 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 is the ending line? Um, is your war over yet? Someone says it's the main character, and it's like. Oh. Like, okay, you've said this line like four times in the movie. <laughs> yeah, okay. If it's been repeated, it sounds kind of cool when you when you you just say it like that, though. No, it's... It's, it's it, like a I, casual line. It's like, what the fuck? No, it's you like know? it's like the whole thing is like... It's like the theme of the movie, but it's like said multiple times. It's also like the situation. I'm not going to get into spoilers about this movie, but the situation was like, that's a lot of bollocks. I don't like... <clears throat> I don't like the, the final like five minutes of this movie. I wish it wasn't there. Mm. Um, But everything everything outside of that film... Oh, gas though, because because obviously this is you know Godzilla minus one as an English title. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people going to see this movie um knew that I went to go see this film in Kulak, and um about fifteen minutes into the film, because uh, obviously it's like subtitles, it's a Japanese film. And uh, fifteen minutes into the film, I heard two people behind me go. Do you know what's going on? And the other person goes, "I haven't a fucking breeze." <laughs> <laughs> Why? But I think it's because it was subtitled, and they weren't expecting it to be subtitled. I think they thought it was an American film, yeah, or at least yeah. in English. Uh-huh. Um, and so yeah, because like this is a this is a very Japanese movie. It's a film about again, like similar to original Godzilla. It's a film about nuclear war. It's a film about uh, nuclear weapons. It's about Japan's, you know, ideologies. In, during World War Two, the way that they conduct themselves and trying to move on from that, still, it's like, bro, it's near, it's been eighty years. Get the f- move the fuck on already, right? <laughs> <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> but no, it's a uh, yeah, it's all about like nu- like nuclear weapons and stuff like that. Because like Godzilla, ha- Go- Godzilla's uh, a like fire breath or like atomic blast in this movie is literally just a nuclear bomb being dropped, like. He, he, like, like in effect, in visuals as well. Oh, right, like right, right. A, essentially, a nuke goes off when Godzilla does it, and oh my god, it looks like Godzilla himself looks pretty good, except for when you see his face in this movie. Like his face looks a bit janky, mm. but like sound design, visual effects. Oh man, for that scene alone, it's worth going to see. That sounds really good. Yeah, I um, recommend. Yeah, like I like the idea that they would. Uh, like there was never very people <clears throat> or character focus mm. in the Godzilla franchise. Mm-hmm. Apparently, I've never watched. I've watched fifteen. I've watched. I think three films. Most the of the thing. time, they're not. The only time uh, that and it received criticism was the the American reboot, or whatever. In twenty was it fifteen, twenty fourteen? Oh, it was okay. all that, about people. Let's talk about the Matthew Broderick one. Oh, so I've seen four actually. Yeah, that one was dog shit as well. That wasn't really a Godzilla <laughs> film. But the one in with the uh, fucking your man Brian Cranston, Brian Cranston, yeah. yeah, like that was muck. Yeah, because right? it's focused on the people. But like, what, like, what, like, what is it? The, the the relation between the people and like the kind of the themes of the Godzilla, mm-hmm. uh, the idea of Godzilla just didn't seem to be t- to connect at all. But the idea of uh, of of uh, connecting those those two things, because it usually I know the original film and kind of the general 
kind of vibe of the series is that like it's it's more about like the, just the idea of nukes, uh, like a, a kind of like a, a oh, psycho, like the good ones, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then it just turns into monster movie. <laughs> yeah, like like the yeah like the the noblest um, extraction in terms of, of themes that you can get from Godzilla mm-hmm. is just is mainly just like you know nuclear catastrophe. Yeah, and the psychological effects of that. Um, but it it is cool because like we ha- we already had that recently with like Oppenheimer, which yeah. is very much a cerebral kind of psychological, you know, big picture idea. It's like oh nuclear war, like this is. This is fucked up. Yeah, this is bad. This is bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we should have done this. Yeah, yeah, but to have it, the the human element like done well, well incorporating that, it sounds like a, it would it would bear fruit. Yeah, in I my think twenty fourteen Godzilla, which the Gareth Edwards one is that his name? Yeah, Gareth Gareth Edwards or Gareth. I was about to say Gareth Brooks. Brooks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's a decent comparison because I think the problem with that Godzilla, the the American one, was that it was human focused. It's cook holded you mm. is that the right word yeah cook holded you with the Godzilla shit as well like yeah, teasing yeah, it yeah. constantly and never actually showing you it <laughs> cooked, um, it cooked you. yeah it just cooked you like straight up um, <laughs> or like at least edged you to the point yeah, where, and, then, it, and then when it, bits. and then when it revealed it was like it was just a sad calm like I didn't fucking <laughs> <laughs> um you know, just dust yeah just dust just a like, dry run like yeah like you know it was just like you know it was just a a ruined wank you know like it's just like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't ejaculate. You just you, just, you, you know, got you got distracted in the middle of it. You just like you sneezed at the same time. Like if I'm gonna describe it in a way, like you jizzed in a way that it's just like you know, like liquid just came out. Like it wasn't like Ugh, it wasn't a release. You know, it's all, it's all, it's all watery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas like, uh, and the human element in that film was fucking shit. It was so like <laughs> no one, no one cared about those characters. No Nobody. one cared. Like the drama didn't hit what so fucking ever. Whereas this film. It, it like satisf- satis- satisfies satisfies you with the Godzilla stuff yeah. like in abundance. There's plenty. Satis- Let me tell you, you're gonna bust a nut in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and the human element absolutely hits, and you care about all the characters. <laughs> Just there painting the scenes in front of you. Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> that, but some of those final scenes. Ugh. <laughs> so someone, someone in the, the seats in front of you. Do you have a, any idea what's going on in here? I don't know, but that guy just came. Oh, 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 yeah, <laughs> what was that? Just went over our heads. <laughs> What was that noise? I think someone fell asleep during this movie talking about talking about noise in the theater. Uh, wet dream. Yeah, man. just fell asleep. Yeah, just fell asleep. How do you how do you fall asleep watching a god a Godzilla film? I just heard, just like <laughs> beside me was like, is he okay? And then I leaned over and I just saw some fella slump in his chair. I was like, how are you asleep in this fucking movie? It's he, so loud. He's deaf to the horrors of nuclear war. Just oh, want to yeah. know. You he's already seen. Ar- I saw Oppenheimer. I understand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but even, like, if you think, because, like, even comparing it with Oppenheimer as well, like, Oppenheimer, an American film, dealing with the fact that they released this horror onto the world or whatever, whereas Godzilla Minus One is a film about Japan dealing with a monster that has nuclear weapons. (laughs) Yeah, mirror image. Yeah, you know, like, that's... it. They're films that compliment compliments probably a weird way to describe it but it's interesting that japan and america came up with two films dealing with the horrors of nuclear weapons in the same year yeah no i, I would say compliments as well like, even just the scale because Oppenheimer is like kind of uh, uh, why it was so interesting it's, it's a blockbuster that is it's just, like trying to be really heavy mm. but it's still not like a blockbuster blockbuster like it's still like a biopic yeah prestige hollywood like oh they are going drama. for that oscar <laughs> yeah oh, they're gonna get it as well but then, like, Godzilla's like, you know, Godzilla. Godzilla is Godzilla. And he's just, it's a monster movie. But at the same time, has that element in there, you know? Mm. It's, it's yin and yang. 100%. You know? I know. I agree. Like China. <laughs> it's yin and yang. Yeah. It's the China. It's the synthesis. It's <laughs> Japan and America, you just get China. It's yeah, <laughs> that's all it is. All the way it always has been. But, yeah, decent owl film about... <laughs> Kind of the end of the world. Mac, have you watched any films about the end of the world? <laughs> I have. In- Funny that you mentioned that. I actually have. I watched Leave the World <laughs> Behind. It's a film on Netflix currently. If anyone has Netflix, you can... Uh, I tell you, man, those numbers are dropping. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Did you get an email from Amazon about Amazon Prime? 
No. They're About introducing what? ads to Amazon Prime now. I did not get that email. I I, did, I actually only just cancelled Disney Plus. It's actually gone now, I think. Yeah, they, they're, they're, they're introducing ads. Ads to Amazon Prime. Unless but you, like, so it, did we get like a discount? No, it's the same price. If you want, if you don't want ads, you have to pay an extra two euro. Two euro. On top of the multi subscription. So I think it's like 13 euro. I don't know. How much is Amazon Prime? Like a tenner a month or something like that? Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's fairly... Because I remember it started out, it was like six euro. Mm. It's like Disney. They draw you in and then it's like, oh, no, it's actually 10 euro now. Yeah, I'm just reading this now. I didn't read this. Yeah, load of bullshit, bro. We will also offer a new ad free option for an additional two ninety nine pounds a month. Two ninety nine pounds. Pounds, pounds as well, man. Four euro. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that you can sign up for here. No thanks. Like I don't. I don't watch Prime anyway. I don't really watch it. Like I like. I like Prime. Like the delivery is grand. Mm-hmm. I don't watch the the service really. Yeah. Ever. Me neither. And then the dodgy box is fine as well. But anyway. Yeah. That 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 is a joke though. If Netflix introduces ads. It it's will. The, it's the end for them. Yeah, because like Amazon has Amazon Disney have the advantages of like you know economies of scale. Like they can do whatever the fuck they want. You they are the like, two biggest companies in the fucking world. How dare you introduce yeah, ads? Yeah, yeah. If they <laughs> well, not to- not Disney, but HBO Max and Now TV, they have ads. HBO Max does. I know Now TV does. Yeah, yeah. Now TV it's fucking yeah. bullshit. That's fifteen euro a fucking month. Wait, in, on everything it has ads. I think you have to pay extra for not for not having ads. So they don't give you a discount, bro. They keep it the same price. And it's like if you want the discount, if you want your discount is that we're not charging an extra fucking four euro. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Tell uh, you, man. <laughs> like, but like Netflix is definitely like they are the the lads in Netflix are up there like you know squeezing their balls. Like we can't, we need to up the prices, but they can't because they have nothing else. Yeah, because like Disney has whatever, they have everything. Amazon has like fucking owns half the the world economy. Mm-hmm. Um, HBO as well, like they have a very specific brand. They're very, Warner very Bros. Yeah, yeah, they've they've their Which own. Apparently, thing. apparently, Warner Bros. is going to be bought by someone else. Did not get bought by Discovery. Or something. Yeah, Discovery Warner Bros. And apparently, they are not making the money that they thought they were going to uh, make. Yeah, so yeah. they might have to be bought by someone else. Zack Snyder destroyed <laughs> the DC extended universe, and then Warner Brothers itself, and. Um, but no, Netflix must be in a hole then because they have nothing. All they have is Netflix. Like, they don't have anything else. They have whatever bullshit movies they make. Is shit. It's muck, yeah. It's just muck. Like, I wanted to watch The Office Christmas special over Christmas. Um, turns out they got rid of The Office ages ago. They have The American Office, which is grand, but I didn't want to watch that. I wanted to watch the other one. Mm. It's like, well, what do they, they have always oh, sunny, stuff like that. What else? Nothing. Yeah, what do, what do you offer me? Like, well, they offered me a pretty good film called Leave the World Behind, oh, which, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, it's actually one of the only, I don't know if it's a Netflix film, and I'm, it not, is. I'm not going to look it up, but it, it it could be, and if it is, it's pretty, it's one of the best Netflix films I've ever seen. I th- I'm pretty which, certain it is a Netflix original. Yeah, like, that's not a high bar at all, no. but like, it <clears> is, It it's a good film, um, and it's made by Netflix. I was so skeptical going into it, because mm. my mom had watched it. Uh, it was over Christmas. We're like, oh, let's stick this on. It's like a wholesome Christmas film. <laughs> Obviously not. And uh, it was like, uh, she like, she was like, oh, this is a good film. Um, and like, but she watch, she'll watch anything. Like you know, she watch anything sometimes. And she'll be like, oh, stick this on. So there's something on the background. You walk in. It's like this fucking Azerbaijani spy drama. And uh, she'll be there on her phone. Be like, oh, it's all right. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's clearly <laughs> not. Fuck you, what's <laughs> it's not good at all. <laughs> She's on season five or something. Um. But she was dead right. I have to say, she was dead right about this one. Only issue, it's kind of long, two and a half hours, should mm. be two hours. There's like, there's entire sequences in the film. I was pointing it out so obnoxiously while we were watching. I was like, this doesn't need to be in the film. <laughs> so obnoxious. Like, how pretentious you have to be to say that? <laughs> <laughs> in a room with other people in it. I was like, <laughs> this does not need to be in the Because I, I, the, the first reason I objected to it was like, this is two and a half hours long. Like, we don't, we don't need like, to watch this. Like, this is a full, full evening, you know? Uh, but then it, the film drags you in real like just really fast like you're just in the story very quickly um, it's about this family does it open with a boat scene it does yeah yeah, yeah. that was a good trailer bro I saw that snippet and I was like yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. like it just it just goes like you're just straight into it straight into the action mm. um, which is a great way to do it um, it's like it's about this family and uh, the family is headed by Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke which is always Ethan Hawke is always a good sign yeah, it's it like <clears throat> you know stick that on he's always He's always in a good movie. So he's in something at least decent. Yeah, like it's never like sinister. It's like it's all right. It's pretty it's, good. It's for a horror movie. It's good. Yeah, you know, for a horror movie, it is actually pretty good. Um, so like that's a stamp of approval already. Ethan Hawke is the dad in the film. That's about his family 
and Julia Roberts family and they're going off they're like this you know upper middle class American family he's like a professor she's a some kind of I don't know executive mm. and the family are going off on vacation and they go you know summering in the fucking I don't know Hamptons or something like that and they're off in this kind of beach town and they're rent- renting an Airbnb um, this huge kind of villa which is apparently $2,000 for a full weekend which I just don't don't believe that, like. it's that's man. the price quoted in the film that uh, is bollocks that is like not true. It's this huge <laughs> villa. I was like, there's no fucking way. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so like they're on the beach enjoying themselves, and then all of a sudden, as you see in the trailer, uh, this huge cargo ship is just suddenly beached. And it's just, just, just is 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 stranded ashore, like for no reason, mm-hmm. no apparent reason, um, and everyone just kind of like flees the scene, and like they're all just escorted off by like police and like the national guard and stuff. But it doesn't seem like anything's crazy happening. Mm. Anything crazy is, hap- is happening. It's just kind of like, what? that was very strange. Mm. That was very weird. All right, let's get back to our vacation. Drive home. Um, they get home and there's no Wi-Fi. Um, and again. Oh, no. Oh, no, yeah. Well, well the kids, obviously, they're fuming. Yeah. They're fuming because they need their tablets and their phones. And, you know, the generation these days, they're fuming. The kids these the days. The kids these days. Julia Roberts and Eden Hawk, they don't really care. There's no alarm bells ringing. It's like, they were just kind of in a kind of remote area it might be an issue with the router whatever like it's very it plays it very straight mm. for quite a while even though obviously you know what the film is about yeah leave it's, the world behind I don't think this is going to be too good it's some kind of disaster film yeah mm. um, but I still wasn't really sure what kind of disaster film it was mm. for like like well into like halfway through the film mm. which is why it's it's really good like suspense yeah uh, in terms of like the way the story is told uh, <clears throat> which is like re- quite rare for a disaster film. Usually it's like, oh, this is happening and this is why you have to care about it. This story is just like, it's going a mile a minute because the stakes are this high because mm. this is happening. They don't tell you anything really for ages into the film. Um, it gets to like nighttime and your man, I don't know, I don't know how to pronounce his first name, Ali, he's the the main detective in True Detective season three. Uh, Mahersha Ali. Mahersha Ali. Um, he comes back or he arrives at the house just randomly in the middle of the night with his daughter and he's saying that he was at a symphony or something like that and he has this weird, ex- like very strange excuse, just shows up inside the house um, and for like 10 minutes I was thinking, is this going to turn into like a, like a, some kind of like Strangers-esque horror mm, film? Yeah. You know? So th- I like that kind of, it's it's leading, like leading your nose away like in little parts, yeah. little, little sections of the film, like little five minute bites and um, and obviously, the family are a little bit kind of like, this is a bit strange. And he's like, oh, no, I own this house. Like, this is... You're I'm, renting off me, bitch. Yeah, I'm the landlord, you know. Um, and there's this whole kind of, like, um, tension, obviously. Because mm. Julie Roberts is not happy about this whatsoever. Um, but they let him stay because he, you know, owns the house. And clearly something is off because they can't uh, get any connection themselves mm. to get back into town. Like, there's no Ubers or whatever. And then over... The rest of the film, it's just slowly like, um, it's like dripping information, like like piece by piece, as it would happen in like a real situation. Mm. So like you have like different disaster films, uh, like for example, like Don't Look ne- or was it Don't Look Up? Don't Look Up. Don't Look Up, which is way more tongue in cheek and not the same kind of, uh, I don't know, idea, the same direction, yeah, the same kind of like uh, scope. Did you uh, get the message of don't look up? No, I didn't yeah. understand. It was too yeah. it was too abstract for me. Yeah, it was quite complex. Yeah, it was too they needed to explain the themes a bit more simply. Mm. Um because if you have to read into it too much then you just kind of lose interest. Yeah. And that was not the problem. I don't know. It, leave the world behind. It's great that it doesn't tell you anything really. Yeah. The entire way through. You're just following the story and then you're you're getting the uh, the information as much information as the characters. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And you're making the same kind of leaps of logic that the characters would make logically in that situation. Mm. Um, and obviously it does, I won't go into it, but like it does deal with like a catastrophic uh, disaster in like modern day America. Mm. Um, but it doesn't tell you what that is until literally like, it maybe it doesn't really, te- I won't even go, in, go into it, mm. but it doesn't really explain exactly what's happening. Yeah. But you, you, you're just you, seeing the effects of whatever this thing is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you gain more and more information as, as the film goes on. So it's kind of like a mystery as well. Mm. But it's also like a suspense film. It's also a bit of a thriller. Um, 
it's like it has weird horror action elements as well mm. and um, that's what makes it so uh, so interesting to watch because it's quite disorienting yeah because you, you really don't know what's happening like something will happen and you'll be like what like what the fuck does that have to do with everything else that's happening yeah. <laughs> like there's just like it honestly is like you're like what the fuck is happening here um, and the general idea of where the of the world that the story has built um like it's it's so well grounded compared to other stuff yeah of like a similar genre where it's it's all very fantastical and it's like this happens and then something which would never happen happened after it and then uh, these people are reacting in totally irrational ways it's something that you're you're like oh i feel like that's how most people react in this situation i feel like that would probably happen Mm. i feel like if this was going to happen that's how it would be done yeah 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 and that like all these kind of like um realistic scenarios Mm. but like couched in uh, a good thriller film yeah yeah so i i was just very surprised for a netflix film to be so grounded and to be so well acted to be so well produced and to actually like kind of to pull off the story in the way it did Mm. i I hadn't seen i don't remember a film that done that like that done that as well on uh, as a netflix production no idea yeah like it just like I was expecting it to just shit the bed at any any second. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like I'm trying to think of like Netflix movies. So am I. I can't think of any. I just have bad memories, so I don't really watch them. There's a lot of there's see. I think the problem is that there is a lot of shit. There's a lot of shit. Yeah. I can't remember. Like obviously, you know, Irishman and stuff like that. But like that's very very different. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't really think off the top of my head. Netflix movies. That were like yeah. as you were as you're describing. Yeah, there's not very many memorable Netflix films. This I wouldn't say this is a film that would stay with you for years afterwards, but it it, it, re- it does a job, and it even like it's constantly teasing. We're gonna go here. We're gonna go there. We're gonna do this. This is gonna happen next, and then you're like, oh no, that's not gonna happen. And um, even to the point where there's a point in the middle of the film, like I was saying, I'm like this this doesn't need to be in the film, and it it kind of lingers on this moment for a while. And I'm like, oh, I see where this is going. This is going to be a shit Netflix original film yeah. where this happens. Because I was like, this, it's, it's being telegraphed. Where like, it's being, they're punching you in the face with this. This is going to happen. And then something else happens. Like, so I thought that, yeah. was, I thought that was remarkable in the sense of, you know, something to remark on rather than being like, whoa, that's amazing. But it, I, I thought it was a very interesting film. I'm looking in at, all. I'm looking at a, a short list of Netflix movies. Roma, which I've completely forgotten about. Roma. Yeah. Power of the Dog, which I haven't seen. Marriage Story, Mank. Mank was muck. The Five Bloods, Glass Onion. Glass uh, Onion was Netflix. Uh, yeah, it was, apparently. Um, I'm thinking of Ending Things. Pieces of a Woman. Oh, I'm thinking of Ending Things. That's actually, that's unfair on Netflix, maybe. Trial of, The Trial of the Chicago 7. Yeah, then the most of them are like... Shite. Beast of No Nation. Oh yeah, I forgot about Beast of No Nation. Yeah. I'll just this as well. Yeah, like most most of the time, not not great, but sometimes. Decent. Unless they're coming from like an art tour, you're just completely rolling the dice with Netflix film. Yeah, you really are rolling the <laughs> dice. Is in you might get a one, you might get three. You're not going to get six. You're not going to get five. You know. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're going to get either something incredibly mid or shit most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes something. Decent. Who's the director for Leave the World Behind? Ah, uh, it's pretty fucking Martin Scorsese now. I say that. <laughs> uh, Sam Esmail. Oh, yeah, I've seen one of his movies. Comet. Comet is dog shit. Comet is really fucking bad. What's is this? I vaguely remember. Did you speak about this? I did. Yeah. It was the vague time jumping film. Or something. Oh, I can't remember his shit mm. though. It was real fucking bad, <laughs> really fucking bad. Um, but glad to see that Sam has made a decent movie. I think it's a decent <clears throat> movie. It's it, it's it's worth a watch. You know, there's a movie that the that the internet hates. Ah, uh. like uh, leave the world behind. There's a movie that the internet hates. Really? Yeah. Uh, the general consensus is that it's shit. I thought it was very. Or good. like terribly mid. No, I thought it was good. I thought. Yeah. See, I don't think it's. Uh, I'd say it's at least a seven. I, I, Which I, is like a ten in Netflix. <laughs> I, yeah, no, honestly, like I, I just wasn't expecting it to be as good as it is. Mm. Like it's just, it's, it's not, it's not a mid movie. I will defend it. I'm not saying it's, it's just not a mid movie. Yeah, like it's, it's, a, it's a good movie. It's, a, it's, it's worth a watch. Not a mid movie. Ethan Hawke is in it. 
It can't be mid. <laughs> Think about it. Like it just it it proper teases you, and it, it actually keeps you guessing, mm. which is quite rare, I think. Yeah, um, and it does leave that el- element of mystery, and it's not too ham fisted about any kind of like it's not too concerned about an execution. It's not it's not like oh they're not looking toward the landing the entire time. Yeah, like, yeah. Let's just kind of keep this rolling. Let's keep it moving. But it does have that section in the middle where you're like, what the fuck is happening here? Like <laughs> this is just completely pointless. It doesn't need to be two and a half hours long. It just doesn't need to be. It's 100 minutes, maybe. 110 minutes. 110. Max. Yeah. <laughs> Max. Max. <laughs> Max. Speaking of Netflix movies, I watched the new Zack Snyder Rebel Moon. So Zack Snyder. Um, not a great director. Not a great track record as a director. Spotty. Um, Spotty. Mostly uh, spotty in what could be good, maybe. Like, Watchmen's yeah. all right. Watchmen's great, man. I haven't seen it in years. I remember thinking that it was all right. It's it's good. Um, People liked Justice League. The Zack Snyder one, not the... People. Yeah, people. Yeah. No, I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Four don't hours know long. I didn't yeah. fucking watch that. <laughs> um, um, Dawn of the Dead remake. It's all right. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Sucker Punch, bad. Sucker Punch, yeah. 300. People love that film. Yeah, weirdos like that movie. <laughs> um, I think that movie was either all right or shit. I can't remember. Mm. <clears throat> um, I haven't seen Army of the Dead. And he's probably made other fucking films I don't care about. Man uh, of Steel. Yeah, film that, yeah. And uh, what was it, Dawn of Justice? Did he make that? Dawn of Justice? Oh, he, no, he, he made half it. Remember the fucking... Ju- oh, no, sorry. What's oh, that? Batman vs. Superman. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, he, yeah. Made, he made that, he made that yeah. movie. Yeah. But he made half of Justice League. Yeah, and then he had yeah. to type it. Um, so, Zack Snyder went to Disney and was like, I have an idea for a Star Wars movie. Mm. Here's my idea. And they said, get fucked. You're not making this movie. And so he turned around to Netflix and was like, Netflix, I have a Star Wars killer. Like, if we make this movie, this could be the next Star Wars. And Netflix were like, okay, that sounds good. And they made the movie. This movie already has a sequel. It is coming out in March. This movie is fucking dog shit. This movie is terrible. This is a very fucking bad movie. Um, Like, I was talking about with Liam today. Happy birthday to Liam. Shout out to Liam. Happy birthday to Liam. And... um. Uh, we were talking about the movie, and he's like, I didn't think it was that bad. And I was like, Liam, it is a bad movie. And he's like, it's like a 3 out of 10. I was like, so it's a bad movie. A, a th- <laughs> what, what, what metrics is, is he going by? Well, in what world is a 3 out of 10 not that bad? <laughs> what the hell? I would have given this film a 2 out of 10. Um, but the problems with this movie is... Oh, it's already got... Uh, a director's cut on the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, An R-rated extended cut. He came out immediately and said, oh, I actually have a director's cut, which is like, what? this film isn't theatrically released. Why is why is there a director's cut for a Netflix movie? What the fuck is going on here? Um, So, it, this film is Star Wars. And what I mean by that is, it is Evil Empire coming down trying to kill characters that are important and they must band a team of rebels to fight the Empire. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're called the Empire in this movie. I think they're called the Kingdom or something like that, which is <laughs> basically a fucking Empire. <laughs> um, and so, it is just a shitty Star Wars Zack Snyder slow-mo fest is this is there slow-mo oh is there mark there is slow-mo of a girl throwing grains of seeds into the ground for no reason whatsoever there is no reason for it how long does the slow-mo last like seconds but it feels like hours <laughs> yeah um some of the slow-mo is cool like there's a shot of a guy jumping onto this weird bird creature in slow-mo I'm like that looks cool but then the slow-mo of like someone picking up a girl of a, a a drink in a bar i was like this isn't setting the atmosphere that this is super tense because you're using slow-mo for fucking everything yeah um this movie is brown gray 
yellow sludge. This movie does not look good. There is like a stylistic choice in this movie where everything in like the center to slightly upper center of the shots is the thing that's in focus, right? Mm. And everything around that is slightly blurred or like even to the point where like there's shots of the characters and the characters behind them are curved around the mm. camera lens. You know what I mean? Yeah, like a vignette. Like. Yeah. There is a shot in this movie where the the focus is on the character's chest because he is standing up and his face is blurred because they have kept this stylistic choice throughout, throughout the film. But he's, like, he's talking. He is talking and his face is out of focus. There is legitimate like technical issues in this movie that are stylistic choices. Mm. And stylistic choices that add fucking nothing to the film. That I don't know why the fuck they're there. It doesn't look good whatsoever. <laughs> um, the movie is like, as I said, like colorless brown sludge. Um, it's two hours and ten minutes and it legitimately feels like four hours while watching the movie. It is painfully fucking boring. And... This is how the movie is set up, right? So, our main character, whatever the fuck her name is, is off plowing these fields. And we get the Star Wars shot of Luke looking at the two at the two moons. Mm. Like, the two suns. That shot, like, again. Like, not kind of again. We get that shot again. As the opening of this movie. And, um... The Empire comes down. And they kill the, the small villages leader and they're like you're gonna give us grains so that we can you know fight our war or whatever and they the townspeople no not the townspeople like the main character and this like he's like one of the army people like the empire people but he's kind of good and he helps them but then he's not in the rest of the film after the first like 20 minutes he's just there for plot reasons um and other male characters they go off to find people to help build a rebel force to fight the Empire. Do you like movies, Mark, where sexual assault is nope. the driving reason for oh. why characters begin their reasons to fight the Empire? What happens? So this one girl is... Like, they, the the bad Nazi soldiers attempt to sexually assault uh, a girl, and that is the driving force for the characters to intervene and stop uh, later on in the movie, that similar thing happens again. But don't worry, this time it's a it's a gay alien trying to do it to the male character, which causes characters to inter to intervene and thus expand their band. Oh. Twice in the movie, there are sexual assault <laughs> scenes where it is the driving reason for characters to join the band. A gay alien tries yeah. to tries to rape one yep. of the main characters. Yep. <laughs> like yeah, this is the second time in the film. This is the second time. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's what's that about? I don't know. What's what's the? How is that storyboarded? How is that pitched? You know. I, how is that approved? I think like what it is is like it's like oh we're gonna have like a cafe scene that's similar to the cafe scene or like the bar scene in Star Wars. Yeah. But this yeah. film is edgy, so we need to have rape involved. <laughs> Someone has to get raped. Uh, <laughs> what? The, imagine the cantina, but with climax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do like. What's that guy's Gasper name? Noe's Gasper Noe's Cantina. Noe. Gasper Noe's <laughs> Star Wars. Um, that actually would be interesting. That would be fucking <laughs> mental. If I did see that. Um, that actually is a great pitch. But I don't know, uh, the tentacles involved. I don't want to see that. Um, Imagine Gasper Noe. This film cost $166 million to make. Imagine Gasper Noe had $166 million to make a science fiction film like this or like Star Wars sweet like Jesus that. the world that we would live in that'd be crazy I think that might end the world if that happens that, w- that would be a paradigm shift yeah it would that actually would disturb the, the force yeah yeah like the, like the a lot of things would have to go wrong for that to happen <laughs> yeah yeah and things go wrong after <laughs> yeah. Um. so yeah there's a that aspect of the film, of the film. Um. so uh they're looking for a guy that can get them in contact with this these rebels, and they stumble into this bar. Got the gay alien scene, and um, <laughs> Charlie Dunham is that his name? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. He's in this movie. I saw a clip of him before I watched this movie, uh-huh. where he was talking about like they said to him like, "What accent do you want to do for this movie?" And he said like, "The Belfast accent is my favorite accent in the world, so I want to I want to do that." 
and he studied really hard and he did it and he said that he nailed it he said that he did a really good belfast accent because like he's from fucking somewhere in england like that's not yeah not yeah. terribly difficult from to do to he might be welsh but anyway um so he did so i saw this clip of him talking about that and when they did the the final you know sh- you know working with the whatever the fuck he had done they turned around to him and said yeah um american audiences aren't going to understand you with this accent so mm. we need you to redo this and we're going to adr it a or d no adr yeah yeah so dub dub it over so you do the whole thing's dope like bane and it's not good because he's mm. still trying to do a Belfast accent, but in a way where Americans could understand it. Yeah. And it sounds fucking terrible. And Charlie Dunham knows this. Like I was, I saw that clip of him talking about it, and he was sad. He was, he mm. he knew it wasn't good. That's such a sh- like he's he's seen. I have this impression of him for good as a good actor. He's in nothing good though. Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah, I was about to say. Like I can't think of a single good film that he's ever been in. I'm probably wrong because I can't. Really the gentleman remember. is fine. Yeah, but he's always in like this, like, like, uh, what is it, Guy Ritchie kind of rip off movies? Yeah, like, but I, I still think for some reason I, he's definitely has to have been something good because I, I, I see him as a Sons good actor. Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, but some, there was something else he was in. But he's always in these shit films. He's in that King Arthur movie, which I also think is a Guy Ritchie movie. Actually, is it? Did Guy Ritchie do King Arthur? Guy Ritchie does King Arthur. I think he did. I think he did. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna look this guy up. So. Yeah, Charlie Dunham comes into the crew and he's basically your Han Solo character. Mm. And he's like, oh, right. So here's really quickly, here's my reasons for wanting to do this. Okay, let's go and get this other person who will also be really helpful. They go off and get him. Oh, hi, uh, this is me. Here's my backstory. Okay, let's go. Uh, Next character. Oh, yeah, this is my backstory. Actually, no, I don't even get a backstory. Here I am. Let's fucking go. Um, Here's this really cool f- slow-mo fight scene. And let's go. Uh, I don't have a backstory whatsoever. We'll get to me later on jump to this general character who they have said is basically the most important character for them to get. Mm. He has about five lines of dialogue in the movie and then poof, we're gone and it's just quickly, this is why I'm important. Okay, next plot point. And every character is just, it's all introductions to these characters. And the movie's nearly two and a half hours long. Like, there is no fucking way that you, I think that might be what, Zack Snyder's director cut my of this film be is that he actually introduces and puts in the characters into the film. So this version of the film just doesn't have characters whatsoever. It's just very quick introductions and backstories mm. to them. Yeah. And there's no chemistry between the characters whatsoever fucking ever because we don't know anything about them. There's no lore. And none of them matter. There is a then they go off, they get the rebels and one of the rebels is like establishes like I'm I'm a good guy. Fifteen minutes later, he self sacrifices, and it means absolutely nothing <laughs> because you don't know this character whatsoever. fucking ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that image though. Yeah, so I'm gonna take the bullet. Who are you? Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh. instead, his sidekick is ooh, actually, this is gonna be the important character for the rest of this series. <laughs> I, I don't think they mentioned her name. <laughs> oh, I forgot to, yeah, I forgot to put a name in the script. So there's just this other character. It's like, okay, here's the real important character. Boom, he's dead. So now his sidekick is actually going to be the important one. Yeah. But we have not done... We've barely mentioned her name. And she's going to be, like, a central character for this franchise. Mm. Great. Um, Like, that is the biggest problem with this film is the characters are awful. Mm. And, like, it is... A very tiring movie to watch because it's boom. Here's an introduction for this character. Boom, introduction to this character. Boom, introduction. And when I say introduction, it is literally like, who? Who's that? Oh, she was a. She's a Japanese swordswoman. Okay, next scene. Who? Who's this guy? He was a general in a war. Okay, next guy. Like yeah, that is yeah. basically the introduction to these characters. Um, the main villain in this film is like. Oh god, what's his name? What's your man's name? That's in um He's in Warm Bodies and Skins and Oh uh, Nicholas Hall. Yeah, man. Don't tell me he's in this. No, no, this is a fucking rip off fucking <laughs> bargain bin version of The Deals, um, Nicholas Holt. I'm no. Telling you, man, that's, I think he's Zach, great. I think Zack Snyder thought about getting Nicholas Holt. He probably said no. Couldn't get him and instead got yeah, this guy, because this yeah. guy 
basically looks like Nicholas Holt. And um he's like, you know, he's just he's just a Nazi. Like that's basically what his character is. And uh <laughs> Yeah, this guy, he's a Nazi. <laughs> he's a bad guy. You don't need anymore. He's a Nazi. Yeah, like, he's, he's the <laughs> bad guy. <laughs> he, and I don't know why this annoyed me so much, but like sci-fi, you know, film, you can put your characters in whatever costume you want. You can do that because it's sci-fi and it doesn't fucking matter mm. as long as it's consistent with the world. This guy oh, wears... This guy, yeah. I've seen him in something else. Deadpool. Is he... He's in Deadpool. He's in Deadpool. Yeah. yeah. He really does look like Ed Screen. Oh, man. He really looks like, Deb- like Deadpool. Like Deadpool. He really yeah, looks, looks like, like Nicholas Holt in this movie. Yeah. No, he do- He looks like Nicholas Holt there as well. He's actually... He's all right in Deadpool. I yeah, he's, so- he's all right. I didn't mean to be so mean about him earlier, but... <laughs> 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 like, I, I like that guy. Oh, he's but, in Deadpool. <laughs> but in this movie, you can get fucked. Yeah. Um, he wears a white shirt and a black tie in this movie and, like, black skinny trousers mm. and for some reason that really really irritated me he's like the gentleman bond villain but he's in space not even he looks like a schoolboy. he Wait, looks like he wears a black suit and tie he wears a black a black tie and a white shirt he's not wearing a suit mark he's wearing a white <laughs> shirt and a black tie <laughs> <laughs> he's late for class yeah literally he looks like fellas i know in school just running down the <laughs> class like, <laughs> same haircut and everything like <laughs> and so like He's like the main villain of this film, and then you know they defeat him, and oh, also after he has used the Death Star, it's not the Death Star, but he's used the Death Star mm. on a on a planet to destroy it, and um, you know bad guys, nuclear war, ooh, but this doesn't touch on nuclear war whatsoever. It's just like ooh, <laughs> yeah, explosions, <laughs> and um, that was crazy. So he dies, dies, and then you know characters are coming back to the village, and they're like, man. This place is beautiful. I w- like, if I'm going to die somewhere, I hope it's here. And I was like, well, can't wait for the next <laughs> movie. Um, and then it's revealed that, like, they, the bad guys get your man's body back and they stick him into this, like, sci fi machine where he, his brain gets transported or, like, his brain energy gets transported to, like, a different dimension. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> I was imagining like, that's how they explain it in the film. Let's put him into this sci-fi machine and then <laughs> transport like his brain. Zack Snyder, like the t- the the keyboard's on fire, you know. Yeah. We're going to transport <laughs> his brain energy energy into a different matrix, and so it's transported to this like other realm where he's talking to the actual main villain of this whole franchise, yeah. and like the main character, we get some brief like backstory to her where she was basically the princess's guard and something went wrong and for some reason she left the space nazis to go live as like a wait a woman yeah yeah the main character is a woman oh yeah zack snyder's gone woke it's ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> and uh so she has left we don't know why like literally the film does not explain why she has left the space nazis but she's left mm. and she's in a she's adopted by the main villain so she's the main villain's daughter. Ah. And he's like, I want her back. You know, whatever means necessary, get her back. And, oh no, she's with the general. That's that's really bad for reasons that we're not going to explain, but that's really bad. Uh, see you in the next movie. I'm intrigued. Man, <laughs> the sequel's coming out in March. I'm in. I'm in. I'm. I'm in for this fucking whole franchise now. That's but it's so soon for a sequel. To, like people won't have watched. Especially it came out on Netflix. Like there's no yep. wide release. I haven't heard anything about this film aside from when you mentioned it to me. Like people won't have watched it. Why would they watch the second film? And like, apparently, a lot of people because they released the the numbers and apparently like the day that it released it was like the number thing number one watch thing on Netflix. Yeah, but like a lot of things are. I don't think that means anything though. Yeah, yeah. Like what was the last number one watch thing on Netflix? Some fucking random thing that no one even remembers. Probably fucking I don't know, that Squid Game game show or something like that. Like it doesn't. Yeah. Like Queen's Gambit. Yeah. Like just it was f- Queen's Gambit Two is coming out. <laughs> it's, no, is it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I think it is actually. But yeah, like this was bad, and like I love watching this film. 
like while I was watching this film, I was like, yeah, I can see why Netf- or not Netflix, Netflix, why Disney said, get fucked, you're not making this movie. Even with those- Disney told him to fuck off. Yeah, like this is th- we're not making this an official Star Wars movie because all all he did was just take influences from Star Wars and you know Alien and like all these other like sci-fi films. All and these just, good movies. All these good movies <laughs> and just mashed them all together with any without any cohesion. Like this film is Star Wars and like Seven Samurai. And like various other sci-fi films, just <laughs> stuck together mm. uh, poorly. And here you go, Netflix, give me money. Yeah, it sounds like a re- like just a, a remake or a mishmash of just random Star Wars films. It is like the the oh, she was adopted by the evil guy. I'm also like, surely that's like some kind of infringement. No fucking wonder that Disney were like, no, we're not doing that because yeah. we've done that with literally every single Star Wars movie. You're not having the main p- villain. Yeah, you're not remaking A New Hope. Yeah, you're not, do- <laughs> <laughs> you're not doing that. No. <laughs> we're not doing that. <laughs> like, oh, uh, you got your rogue bounty hunter. Like, we're not doing that. We're not doing the, you know, <laughs> we're not doing this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, it just sounds like infringement. But The only thing that this film doesn't have is that it doesn't have, like, the force or anything like that. But mm. this is only the first movie, so we'll wait. We'll wait. See. You don't know. Maybe they'll, like, ha- they'll have a little green man who teaches the way of the warrior to like the new, you know, the, the main character, or whatever. That, 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 that could, could be on the ha- That could happen. You know, that could happen. And maybe he just speaks like a really dumb person. It's like, oh, he's cute. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Aww, look, look at him. He's actually really smart, but he's hiding. Yeah, but he talks like an idiot. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love him. Yeah, this movie is not good. Not good at all. I recommend everyone watches it so that we can. That's a shame. But how long is this film? Over two hours. Fuck that. And it feels again. It feels like four. Fuck that. And like the action isn't even good. There is slow mo in this movie where the slow mo, like, took away from the film and the aspect that like it something was happening in slow mo and I couldn't tell what was happening mm. because it. Like, one character, like, was smashing someone in the face, and then all of a sudden the person behind them had their face smashed in. But the slow-mo was too busy showing you the person fall to the ground so that I couldn't see what was happening in the rest of the fight. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, don't... Maybe, like, Zack Snyder, you've been around for 20 years using slow-mo. Surely at this stage you should know how how it works. Yeah. Or at least know how to prioritize it and make it work. Or, like, does it work? When has it worked? 300, maybe? Maybe. When did it work after that? It hasn't. <laughs> in The Matrix? The Matrix. That's it. <laughs> the Matrix, There's no other The film. Matrix is the one-time slow-mo work. Yeah, like actually, like, objectively worked. Yeah. For, um, like, four scenes. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, there's just no other example <laughs> of it ever working. Um, Even all the fucking slow-motion YouTube channels have gone down fucking the drain, you know? No one watches them anymore. Fuck. Let, yeah. let slow mo die. Yeah, it's, it's who cares? Like, I don't care. This is happening so slowly. <laughs> yeah, the new thing. <laughs> this is boring. It is the new thing is to speed things up. Mm. You know, stick it on fast one, cuts. Yeah, stick it on one point two five speed, which is what I did with Willard. Oh shit! <laughs> which is a film that I watched. I <laughs> saw so just a film. <laughs> <laughs> I saw two different films called Willard. Uh, I I stuck this on in uh two point f- or what you call it two imagine two point five speed imagine that <laughs> <laughs> this movie is crazy it's only twenty minutes long like my powers are growing you know <laughs> I can watch them faster and faster sure, sure. but it, it's um no we have Willard it uh so Willard is actually two different films there's a nineteen seventy one film and then there's a two thousand and three film uh the nineteen seventy one film is obviously the original film. Um, and it's a it's a horror f- it's 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 listed as a horror film. I wouldn't consider this a horror film whatsoever. I'm not really. Gonna, I'm gonna because it's yeah. It's not really. Sc- anyway, uh, but I'll talk about the the main one because it's the one I probably like actually watched. The other one I didn't re- probably watch. But Willow 2003. This is with Crispin Glover, your man. Uh, uh, what's his name? Marty from or McFly from uh, Back to the Future, like his dad. Oh, I was about to say. I was like, yeah, <laughs> no, no, not Michael J. Fox. No, it's like. Uh, mm. So, yeah, it's the dad from Back to the Future, uh, Crispin Glover. Like, the guy with the really pointy face. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he hasn't aged a bit, which is just really bizarre to see, because this is 20 years on from Back to the Future, and he looks the exact same in this film. Maybe like, he went... The, maybe he went... Uh, Willard. Forward in time? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but he, he, he looks the spits. <laughs> he went Willard. <laughs> <laughs> the title of the film. <laughs> um, 
but he's in this film and uh, I, I remember I, I'd heard about this film vaguely before mainly because Michael Jackson actually like kid Michael Jackson when he was like you know happy and stuff he, he made a, <laughs> he, I mean, there was life in him or maybe it's the Jackson 5 whatever it was or the Jacksons they made uh, he made a song it's called Ben and it's about this It's he's talking about his, his best friend Ben he's like Ben who it's a you know, we'll always be together. It used to be me and I, and now it's we and us. You know, we are friends together. It's actually about a rat. It's about it's made for a film called Ben, uh, the eponymous film called Ben, which was a sequel to Willard from 1971. So Ben came out in 1972. Michael Jackson made a, made a song about it. I just remember vaguely hearing about it when it I was, is I was a younger. It's Michael Jackson song. It's not the Jackson Five. Yeah, yeah, and he was like, what was he 10, 12 when he made that? Yes, so bad. weird. It's a beautiful song. Um, <laughs> it, it actually pl- it plays in the credits of Willow 2003 um, and the other reason I'd heard about it I just remember vaguely reading about Crisp and Glover um, trying to go for awards through this film uh, back in 2003 like he's tr- trying to kind of trying to make a statement I don't remember where I read that or where I heard it but I, I think that was a thing uh, but he is like he is terrible <laughs> terrible in this film like he is like just terrible oh like overacting like it's it's very rare that like you see acting and usually it's kind of people like talking like man like talk like me like monotonous like uh, like not really interested apathetic so you're kind of like not in with the vibe of the scene mm. and crispin glover is the reverse which is i think more rare to see where it's someone who is like who understands what each scene demands of him and clearly is Kind of like, kind of knows what acting is. Like he is, he's a, he is a, an actor. He's mm-hmm. a good. He, he, he was good in Back to the Future. Yeah. I'm sure he's a good actor. I'm sure he'd be great in like a local play or whatever. <laughs> I'm sh- I'm sh- I'm, Whoa! What no, a fucking <laughs> no, no, not like that. Like I'm sure he's a good <laughs> he actor. Be great in a local I'm play. sure he's a good actor, but he is like, and he's great. He's fine for most of the film, and then anytime like the tension ratchets up even like a little bit, he starts like he, he has like a meltdown, like overacting like there's no tomorrow it's just so weird it's it's just really jarring mm. um he has a wild i know yeah discography like he's he's a filmography. he's a canonical actor like he's he is like he's definitely is a good actor because yeah. he's been around so long so so long he's in back to the future back to the future 2 the 2000s Alan in wonderland what's eating Wil- gilbert grape seven psychopaths charlie's angels while the heart dead man nine Friday the Thirteenth at a final chapter, which I forgot he's in that. Hot Tub Time Machine. Yeah, yeah. Epic movie. Open season two and three. Jesus. Like he's definitely a Nicolas Cage esque actor, where he's like this kind of eccentric guy, who either deliberately or maybe in this case just like unintentionally completely misinterprets, or maybe is he, maybe it's editing, whatever. Anyway, it's his performance is just so jarring in certain scenes. Like, what? Why is he fucking reacting like the this? Fuck is this? <laughs> like, this is such a bizarre reaction for a character to have. <laughs> Um, but it's about this guy called Willard Styles. So like the whole thing is it's kind of vaguely it's creepy. So the 2003 film is actually somewhat creepier. It's not listed as a horror film as much as this 1971 film is, mm-hmm. but it's a lot creepier in my opinion because it actually does kind of take these gothic kind of tropes and themes similar to something that you'd see in maybe uh, like Lovecraft, yeah, or like Poe. Um, it takes a lot of that stuff. And it even has the kind of the idea that the, the the thrust of the story is this guy Willard Styles who is working like this dead end job. He's like this complete incel, Norman Bates esque character. He's a rip off Norman Bates. Um, he's uh, working at this local factory, which used to be owned by his dad. His dad was like cheated out of the business by this rich businessman who's now his boss, who can't fire him even though he shit the job because he made a deal with the dad or whatever. Um, in the 2003 version, the dad is already dead, and they're like. He's like, oh, I, I would fire you, but I made a deal with your dad to look after you and your mom mm. until your mom dies. Once you're, like, then he's, he's like, once your mom is dead, you're fucking out of here. Like, you're, <laughs> you you're are done. fucked. And he's a complete loser. Total loser. Um, he's very, like, just very shy. He loves his mom, like, obsessed with his mom. Oh, great. Um, and he goes, you know, every day he, he goes to his job, he fails there, and then he goes back home and he looks after his kind of, like, his ill mother and he's just, his whole life is tending to her in this math- massive, uh, gothic mansion that they live in and um, it's like this huge house so the, the this, this whole idea of like a of a, a moneyed family that has basically fallen from grace and they're, they're living in the ruins it's like dusty dark ruins mm-hmm. of their former selves and 
they have like reached this like familial bottleneck which is represented by willard Mm -hmm. which he's just this complete loser like his dad was like you know he was a he was he was a a local celebrity he was a a king you know he he was a very very successful man owned a factory had a huge house nice little family now willard's just he's like nothing so he used to deal with all that kind of weighing on him and then his his mom is very you know, oh, would you ever get a fucking girlfriend? Or get you know, get a get a get a real job. You need to focus on your work. Like, stop tending to me and stuff. And he rese- he's resentful of that. And then there's this whole idea of uh, rats. Rats show up in the basement. Uh, and at first, you think it's the mom just having these visions or these like hallucinations because she's deathly ill. Um, and then it becomes apparent that there actually is some kind of you know infestation down in the basement. Or is there? But anyway, so Willard has to go down and exterminate or take care of the rats because that's his job. That's the only thing he's useful for. And like everything else, he completely fails to do that. And he actually ends up adopting um, one of the rats. And he calls it, it's like this little white rat. He calls it Socrates. Uh, it's a little female rat. And he begin, He can communicate with this rat. He can tell it to do things. Um, and it becomes his only friend. So what th- a sad bastard. So this film, it's not like some like high faluting some like grand themes it's like oh it's like a, a character study this is not like a like it's not a particularly good film at all <clears throat> um it's just kind of a cheesy gothic like goosebumps episode which is i i, I have no problem with that you know i've no problem because it does it well and um, like it's very creepy and so he basically becomes the pied piper of the rats and their little gang down in the basement is growing and growing by the day to like a, a ridiculous extent, like a like a, a fantastical extent. Mm. So, I I'd see the stories more as both movies as more of like a fairy tale than anything yeah. else. Like it, it it literally is kind of a combination of some old you know wives' tale or like fairy tale combined with gothic kind of like vaguely Lovecraftian uh, Edgar Allan Poe elements. And that he, so he's he's like king of the rats. He's king rat, um, and he uses that. Um, to like his own advantage because he wants to take revenge on the world because the world has wronged him mm-hmm. he's like an incel kind of you know he's the loser um, and he's wronged by his boss his boss is like fuck you like you're just like you're done you're a bum because his mom passes away so he's like get the fuck out and obviously Willard breaks down because the only thing he has in his life is his job he offers the house to the boss the boss says you can have your job back if you give me the house so he's like you know give me your dignity and I'll let you be my slave for mm. you know the rest of your life, whatever. Um, so Willard take, takes revenge, and the rats are basically like a they're like a metaphor for his like his descent. Like he's not he's 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 like his family his like genetic line has gone from like being top dog to this like complete loser, and then the rats are like a symbol of like him like just returning to this like animalistic you know origin, mm. which the this whole gothic. Uh, house is kind of uh, like the way it's dilapidated, the way it's kind of falling down. You know, the the, the whole gothic theme of things returning to nature, of like this an unnatural structure, uh, burying like the seed of its own destruction, and that destruction is something you know very ancient, very unknowable, very animalistic. Mm. And so the rats, that's what they represent. Um, so he sends the rats after the boss. <laughs> they eat the boss alive. Nice. He, he can he can command them, you know. Um. And then there's this whole thing it was like a kind of like a biblical uh like karmic punishment against Willard because then obviously he has to go, he has to cover up the crime he tries to kill the rats there's this king rat um who uh who is called ben and ben is Ben has his own sequel in the seventies um and he turns against Willard so he's like a super smart rat and so he's like, "Fuck you Willard, we're gonna take you down with us like in a very like again it's like it's like fall of the house of usher like a we're gonna bring you with us, um, and yeah, like it, in two thousand, the two thousand three version is very much just like a, it's nearly like a morality tale, like couched within this like not scary horror film, mm. which is also like kind of a suspense slash psychological thing going on. Um, the yeah, the rats end up eating Willard, and you know, or no, sorry, in the two thousand three version, um. He actually just gets locked up for the murder. It's actually a very boring ending. But I watched this 1971 version for a comparative look. Um, and it's bizarre. It plays it so straight. For a horror film, it's like it's 
it's brilliantly well like it's just so well lit as in like texas chainsaw like everything's like, yeah, yeah completely like bright um and it doesn't seem to have any like it's so innocently kind of structured like it doesn't it's there's no kind of like sense of foreboding yeah. it's a horror film but it's, it's more of like a it's very much more of a, a fairy tale it's like oh like look at like, this is crazy he's like he's like you know king of the rats and look, he's he's using his powers to take revenge, and then you know the revenge bounces back on him. Um, and in that version, the that, that version is a darker ending where he actually does get eaten by the rats, which is just bizarre. I think it's the only reason why it has kind of a some kind of lasting cultural impact. Mm. And the fact they got remade is because it's it's just this weird artifact, um, that isn't like isn't a B movie properly. Mm. Like it's still it's well made and it's like it's quite well acted the story is more interesting more convincing um but like it's still not very good at all (laughs) Uh, (laughs) but but it's just like it's kind of an interesting story it's like it's it's a it's a callback and it's like it's it's such a rip-off of like psycho and other things as well like it's a complete rip-off but at the same time it has its own character to it Mm. like the 70s one um the 2003 one is like very very different um but like it, it really has its like own character, which somehow managed managed or has managed to let it survive into the present, even though like nobody fucking knows what this film is. <laughs> but like it did get I've re- never heard of this it, film before. It did get remade uh, in two thousand three, and it has that Michael Jackson song, which is also probably one of the reasons why people remember it. Yeah. Uh, but I just thought it was a, f- a funny little film. I decided to to watch the the original film because I was like, I heard they were slightly different, and they kind of are. Yeah. But it, it's a fun little kind of. Is it is it uh, what is the description for that movie? It's worth 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 the worth your time. What was that? It's a, worth the time to watch. Yeah, not a, it's not a waste of time to watch. Yeah, yeah, worth the time to watch. It's the kind of film you would have seen. You would have been walking through Extra Vision, and you would have seen the cover of this, and you would have been like, "Oh, that looks scary." I have eighteens because this is like an eighteens film, definitely. Mm. But like, it's not scary enough to scare any adult. Um, like it has a, a story basically for kids. You know, it's a score, a story for like teens, basically. Um, so you wouldn't be able to rent an extra vision, but you'd be able to think about, oh, that looks kind of scary. You know, it's that kind of film. Mm. Um, yeah, no, it was pretty good. Pretty Sorry. good. Huh? That, that was pretty good, Mark. <laughs> you said you had much more to say about Willard than I thought you did. <laughs> no, well, I watched, I watched two of them. So. <laughs> I watched two. I didn't really talk about the seventies one because it, it really isn't a lot to say. But the uh, yeah, and Crispin Glover is just like. The scariest thing about Willard is like the acting. It's just like what the f- like. It's just it's like it's just jarring. Mm. There's a scene where this guy, <laughs> it's like the guy. There's this like lawyer who's conspired. He's obviously been hired by the big businessman. Uh, Willard's uh, mother has died, and he's at the funeral. And like he has like he's like he's like letting his rat say goodbye to the mom, <laughs> and then she runs off into the casket, and has this like kind of like Chekhov's gun thing where like oh uh, like. Someone walks in, he's like, they're going to find a rat. Yeah. And I'm going to be like, what the fuck is going on here? It doesn't happen. Your man just, the w- lawyer walks in, he's like, Willard, you need to sell your house. Like, you're bankrupt. Like, there's debt. Your father had debts. He passed it on to your mother. Now they're your debts. You are completely broke. You have nothing. You need to sell your house. Like, you just you just need to do it. And he just, Willard just freaks the foot. <laughs> like, he just, like, loses his mind. Like, breaks down. And the entire film, has never showed any emotion, really, at all. Mm. And suddenly, he's like, he's like, it's like it's like the character from fucking Back to the Future. Just like, oh man, you can't say that, man. Don't don't do this to me. It's like, what the f-? like? This is so weird. Especially because like, you're thinking about oh the rats and the the cat it never comes back. <laughs> it never shows up again. Uh, but yeah, uh, well, I will not watch that movie. But I'm <laughs> if it's on, leave it on. That's the, that's that kind of film. Yeah. Hey, what did we say? An ambiance film. It's an ambiance film. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Will we go for a quick break? And now for our recommended film of the episode. Be My Cat, a film for Anne, 2015. An aspiring filmmaker goes to shocking extremes to convince Hollywood actress Anne Hathaway to star in his film. First entry in Adrian Tofi's trilogy, which includes We Put the World to Sleep and Pure. Don't know why that's in the description for the movie, but there you go. There's a trilogy. Yeah, apparently there's a trilogy. Um, 
neither of those films are out yet, so cool. Um, yeah, so I don't know where the fuck I heard this film from. Um, I heard about it sometime last year, year before maybe. Um, and saw those on YouTube and was like, oh, that looks interesting. Um, this movie is a fucking nightmare. Holy shit. What did you think about this movie? <laughs> uh, this film made me extremely uncomfortable in ways that, like, I didn't... Yeah, because, like, I read the description and expected, you know, found footage. Uh, horror is, movie. Yeah, horror movie. But it didn't really feel... Like, the way it's presented doesn't really feel like a horror movie. I knew it was going to be something fucked up. On a snuff movie esque, the way people were talking about it. Yeah, but I I, I was just extremely disturbed by the film, but not in the way that I didn't feel like I was in danger. You know, mm. like in in the sense that like if I was watching fucking Guinea Pig or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you're not watching a like, film that's gonna scare you. Yeah, I wasn't watching a film where I didn't feel like it was like in bad taste. Yeah, really either. I feel like it was a very well controlled. Very like methodical, like methodically produced. Like he, this the guy who made this. You felt like you were in safe hands. Yeah. Even though I trusted on on Dre. Whatever his name was, Adrian. Yeah, Adrian. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I trusted Adrian to deliver this film, even though obviously the actual character he's playing and the film itself is extremely disturbing. Yeah. Like very uncomfortable to watch. Um, like. It is extremely uncomfortable. To watch. Like this is not a, an ambient film, you know. No, <laughs> no, this is not a movie you put on in the background. No, yeah, yeah, don't. It's not a film you show to your your family or whatever. Um, it's very disturbing, but not in a way that feels gory or anything like that. It's yeah, like it's not like one of those type of disturbing movies. Yeah, like it does feel. I don't. Know, it doesn't feel like dirty in the ways like certain films like that would feel yeah. necessarily, or the way that I would I had felt about films like this before. Um, like it, it feels very artful the way it's executed. Yeah, you know, but it is like, extremely disturbing. And it, but it's it's so the fact it's so well acted. Yeah, that's the thing. But the acting nearly takes away from how disturbing it is because you're like, how the fuck is this not real? <laughs> you're like, this is just so realistic that I'm like, what the hell? Um, like I don't know. It's just what, what did you think of the film? I just I think this is the best performances I've seen in a low budget film. Like, across the board, like, we've seen this before, and, like, the four... So, this movie is about Agent Tofi, um, wanting to make a movie starring Anne Hathaway, because he saw her in Dark Knight Rises, and he thinks that she's a great actress, so he wants to make a movie that she will star in. And Be My... It, the film that he wants to make is called Be My Cat, and it is a film where he convinces Anne Hathaway see this film is so incredibly meta so it's hard to describe yeah. it is a film the film that we are watching is a kind of documentary or like the recordings of Adrian Tofi, the character convincing Anne Hathaway to be in the movie and how he does that is by working with other actresses within the movie with the, the movie within the movie. <laughs> yeah. And murders them. Um, But what's so disturbing with the movie is how Adrian goes about and describes his beliefs and what he wants to do and how, like, how he's getting away with making this... Because, like, what we're seeing in the movie is explained that he is making a movie. So when the women are screaming out for help and stuff like that, he's like, they know we're making a movie, so there's no point in screaming because people think that you're just acting. Mm. But you, as the art, like, as a watcher, are like, this is explaining why no one is intervening within the, you know, the film that I'm now watching, mm. where because it's a found footage film. It just, like, it, it explains itself... And, like, very well as to why the events of the movie play out how they do. And, like, the acting is integral to that. Uh, this guy, Agent Tofi, I don't fucking know, bro. I think this guy needs to be on a fucking list somewhere. Yeah, My, yeah. This guy plays a creepy, deranged, incel-esque fan way too well. <laughs> yeah, like, it's not... The, the performance isn't... Um... It's so naturalistic. It doesn't feel like he's acting. But not in a way... 
Like, you know, like Daniel Day-Lewis will be the character. So he's not really acting because he is the character, mm. even when he's not on on camera. And um, like, this feels like it's like it's it's something that you would just find on YouTube. Yeah, literally. And but like, you know, you'd watch a YouTube clip and if they're putting it on, they would kind of like it would waver. It would be erratic. It would just, you know, it wouldn't hold up. Or if they weren't putting it on, it'd just be a disturbing video that mm-hmm. would end after a few seconds or a few minutes. Uh, but he's so consistent and he's so naturalistic in the way he does it. Even the little ticks that he has, like the maniacal laugh. It's not even a maniacal laugh. It's a laugh that, like, I know loads of lads that have, like, mm-hmm. a laugh like that. Like, I know people that have, uh, I know a Romanian guy that has a laugh like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, it's, but it, the way he does it, even the way, like, I don't know, just how he reacts to certain things, what he finds funny is just so, um, Maybe I'm overthinking it, but like it's just so well done. Oh no, like, I it's think you're inc- incredible acting. I think you're spot on. And even the the girls are insanely good as well. Um, like the so there's like three women who are featured in his film within the film. Uh, the first one I don't really remember. She's not in it for that long. Um, she was good though. Mm-hmm. Like she is very good. And that whole first sequence where he's like, it's very unclear what exactly is happening for the first yeah. 20 minutes of the film. You just know something is off. Yeah, something's seriously off. He's he, like, you need to, I'm not going to give you the solution for this. So basically he's like trying to get her to, he is getting her to play an actress. He's playing, he's getting her to play like Anne Hathaway in a situation where she's walking back and forth to a studio or whatever. And then he's telling her, I'm going to walk up to you and be really creepy and you need to solve this solution and don't let me get too close. And you can't run. And you can't run. But I can run. But I can run. <laughs> and, like, and she's like, I, this is impossible. It's like, it's not impossible. Find a solution. But like, just that rising tension. Mm. And you're like, I don't know what the fuck is going on here, Paul. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. She ca- she calls the, the police. And the police arrive. and then But then the next scene... So like it's... it's, it's the, like the point before she calls the police for about two minutes it's, it's unclear which if if she's acting like not acting in the film but like acting in the film within the film if she's acting or being serious about like you know get away from me mm. like you're fucking crazy you're uh, a loser you're a loser yeah I, I want you to stay away from me because she's speaking in English the entire time which I think is telling because when they're at like when there's like distress whatever they start speaking in Romanian mm. and he asks them to speak in English for the film um, she calls the police like maybe that's part of the film because then the next scene she's back filming with him again. Yeah. Um. So like I feel like there is some kind of like commentary there about I don't know like the you know objectification and fucking the hyper real highway of the internet mm. and the fact that like you know you can't find videos you know not necessarily the same as this but you can't find just weird fucking shit on like live leak mm-hmm. or that doesn't exist anymore but like you know just like random videos on the internet where people it's like nearly the the existence of the internet itself produces or the existence of like you know uh instantly connect connected communication and like uh the global media it nearly pr- demands the production of stuff like this mm-hmm. in it like by virtue of the fact that it exists in itself yeah like the fact that even he's obsessed with Anne Hathaway someone he's never met that lives in a completely different country the fact that it's set in Romania and like it's not like it's a shithole town in Romania, mm-hmm. which he talks about at some point in the film, like some something completely removed from his his life. Uh, so he's obsessed with that. But in a way, the women are also obsessed with something else. It's like just, just they're committed to this weird, or this they, they weird want, fucking dude. Yeah, yeah. They're like they want to. They, they like you know, I don't know. They seem to like uh, they want to be in a movie, um, but like this guy's clearly fucking insane, and they just like put their trust in him. You know, because they want to be famous or they want to be, you know, they, they want to make money. Um, and obviously, it just doesn't turn out well at all. But the, the first girl is just, um, she's like very good as well. Mm-hmm. But she stays with him after the yeah. police show up. And you're like, what exactly is like happening here? Yeah. And then it starts escalating or it starts, you know, downgrading. It gets like a lot more tense and it gets a lot more serious. Yeah. Because then he's not really. Because up to then, he's a character. He's like, I'm playing this character. This character that I'm playing is doing this. And then all of a sudden, it's the, the lines the start lines to blur. blur. Very subtly. like Very quickly. He's like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. walked in the road, and I'm going to use chloroform on you. And he's like, 
and then he's like oh like this bottle is it's just water don't worry it smells funny because it, there used to be alcohol in it and it's like oh okay cool and he's like no it's it's uh, it's actual chloroform i'm gonna chloroform her and you're like where the fuck did this come from <laughs> <laughs> but even he, he doesn't um He's always referring to the character he's playing. Yeah, Adrian's going to do this. Yeah, and then less and less. Like, once he's chloroformed her, and she's back, yeah, he's brought him back. He starts saying, brought... I'm going to do this. Yeah, and but then he's like, he nearly like corrects himself. He's like, oh, the character, I'm playing the character. And eventually just does away with the, the whole charade yeah. altogether. He's like, I'm, I'm going to do this. Like, when he's about to, the second girl, he's going to cut her up with the knife yeah and he's yeah. like i'm going to transform her body i'm going to show you what a great director i am mm. and th- this woman she's going to make the ultimate sacrifice but she's still thinking that he's playing the character but at this stage there is no there's no longer the character and like it's just him it's yeah. just him but even the fact that like obviously like he's using his real name for this film mm. and like he stars in it he wrote it he produced it like everything is him so like the layers of we're dealing with Adrian, the the real life person, then Adrian, the man within the movie, and then Adrian, the man within the movie within the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, and then these layers like collapse, collapse altogether because the film is so realistic and like like uses its budget amazingly well. Like when he's when he starts to kill the the girl and like cut her up we don't see anything and the reason for that is like oh and i'm gonna save you not having to see the blood and gore here because i don't want to make you uncomfortable mm. even though i'm gonna cut this woman up and like just like that just like again he just says what he's doing basically every um limitation that the film has mm. there is a reason like a logical reason within the movie to explain that limitation mm. and like it just adds to the realism and why Things happen the way that they happen. Mm. Um, yeah, that I think I I love that as well. That he keeps saying like, "Oh, my character is going to do this," and then he just drops the facade. And he's like, "I'm going to do this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even I think there's a bit where he says like, I think he basically just like there's a bit where he's like, "The lines are blurred now. I'm not really sure if I'm aging or aging the character anymore." Yeah, um, yeah. I feel like that's kind of a, there's some kind of super liminal. Funny games kind of thing happening there. Yeah, I thought this was better than Funny Games. To be fair, yeah, no. To be honest, like I thought it was like, it just makes the point a bit. Like it's it's like the film isn't subtle at all, but then again, it is. You know, mm. like, but there's certain. I'm like, I'm not sure. There's certain things. I'm like, I'm not sh- sure if that's what they're going for. Mm. Really, if I really understand the film, but I, I enjoyed it more than watching Funny Games. But I feel like the point is basically similar. You know. Mm. Or vaguely similar, mm. you know. It's like this kind of like there. It's it's for it's literally fort wall breaking. I'm telling you, like this is what's gonna happen. Yeah. And um, but but then there's like this pretense of no, maybe I won't do it. Maybe maybe this is happening. Maybe it's not happening. Whatever. Playing with the audience, but the audience always knows what's going to happen. Knows why they're watching the film. Mm. Um. But still continues to watch. And yeah. Still continues to maintain whatever pretense that continues to go along. Nearly collaborate with this guy throughout the entire thing. Um, but I, I just think it's it's very very fascinating film. Yeah, very fascinating film. And yeah. the the middle woman is an amazing actress. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah. She is like, ex- it, it was actually disturbing to watch that. Yeah, no. She was scarily good. It's so uncomfortable to watch because she is like, it's it looks like she just plays it so awfully well. It's it's horribly horrible. well. It's horrible. <laughs> like this whole ent- like she thinks she's like a sex worker who like. And he like he he was like his whole thing is like he he attracts the actresses with kind of like he's like you're gonna be uh, like you're perfect for this movie I'm gonna bring you, you over. Because you look like Anne Hathaway. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna bring you over. So he like kind of seduces them, or he like convinces them into the film rather than them applying to him. And she uh, assumed that this was like you know he was looking for sex or whatever. Um, and then there's like this misunderstanding, and then he's like insulting her, but the entire time she's trying to play it off, and it's just so. Oh, it's painful to watch. <laughs> it's so painful to watch, but it's incredible acting. Yeah, like it's incredible. And even yeah. like the final bit where the final girl convinces him, mm. slowly convinces him over the span of like this fifteen-minute conversation to go and be with Anne, and he's just like, "You're right. I'm going to. I'm not going to make this movie. Like, I think, I think I'm going to leave." And like the way that she convinces him. Mm is so realistic because she gets into his head and because we're all we're always from Adrian's perspective 
we like I was like, is she is she gonna team up with him? What like what like because she starts she's so good at this at, at like this this in this part that she starts to convince you as the audience that she is on the side of Adrian, even though she's definitely not. Like mm. she is just she is acting to him to get him to out, yeah. to let her live and she convinces you the audience of that as well yeah like it's oh no it's mad the acting in this film is insanely good yeah insanely good um i love as well the because obviously like we we talked about is a perfect blue we talked about ricardo the um i can't remember his second name lopez is that his name the the bjork stalker yeah yeah ricardo lopez this film like that's yeah it's him. i'm assuming he studied tapes of ricardo lopez yeah definitely yeah because like the way that he acts in this movie and like the way that he like rambles and like it's like he starts rambling and then he makes a point to himself on something and he's like oh my god that's so smart and then continues to develop on that point like mm. at one point he's like the the audience he's like really like emphasizing like how good this film is gonna be and he's like the audience they're gonna they're 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 gonna lose their ego yes the audience are gonna lose their ego they we're gonna we're gonna communicate to millions of people with mm. this movie and like just this like psychotic um obsession is so well captured. Mm. I I'm convinced that he had to have watched all the Ricardo Lopez tapes to make this film. <laughs> That's a tough watch. <laughs> That's a tough watch. Yeah, like he's just it's such a weird film because it, like the way we're describing it sounds so horrible. Like just the bait, like the bones of the plot. You know, like it just sounds like an unpleasant film, and it is. I mean, a re- it is. <laughs> it is a really unpleasant film and really disturbing. But there's just something really awful about the way it's mm. done. Um, I think it's because it's not exploitation. Yeah, yeah. And like to the extent that it is, it's some, it's like a parody, mm. obviously, or it's not like it's not like an overt parody, but it's very self conscious. And you can see everyone, you know, is in on the joke to the extent that you can see that. Yeah. In a film that has some sus- suspension of disbelief, you know, um, like everyone's committed to this. Uh, like it's just the, the, the acting is just like, if the acting doesn't didn't work in this film, it'd be shit. Mm. But like it's just so like and it's very rare that. I I would watch a film and be like the acting's so good in this. Mm, like, yeah, act, yeah. at least you just shot a dude for being a bad actor in the last the last bit. <laughs> ah, he wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but he couldn't he couldn't pull this off. He'd be like, "Whoa, I'm gonna cry Anne Hathaway. You have to be with me." You know, <laughs> like fuck off. This guy's like just like it's just creepy how like on on the nose it is. It's just so creepy. Mm. Especially like I think we've seen more clips of like incels and shit like that out in the public. In more recent years, like, mm. this film was 2015. Like, I feel like incel shit was only just kind of coming out around that time. Maybe slightly earlier, like 2012. But like, you had Elliot Roger, I think 2014. Yeah. yeah, like so. Like, it's very. This is early on in the like, in this type of shit being very mm. like widely well known. And Agent Ovi fucking nails it. Oh my god, he nails it. It's like the kind of it's the kind of thing you find when you like turn over a rock. It's just a lot of fucking bugs running around. Yeah. You know? It's like just forgotten. It's like an artifact. You know? And the fact that he's like, I don't know, like culturally aware enough to be able to make that in a, not like a, a accurate or like just like, in a, a, like an artful, well made mm. way that still makes sense. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's for, for the fact it came out in 2015 as well. Like yeah, I know. It just seems pretty. It's nearly 10 years old, this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Don't say that. It's crazy. But that's a good movie. It good is movie. a very good movie. Good horror movie. Um, yeah. So psychological horror movie. Very much so on the psychological fucked end. Fucked up movie, yeah. yeah. I like... Yeah, it wouldn't stick to sound with the fam. <laughs> it wouldn't stick to sound with the family. I think this might kill my granddad if I showed him it. <laughs> <laughs> not a Christmas movie. No. Oh, no, God, no. Definitely not. Right. Marco, what is your recommended film for episode 131, 131? Uh, the odds. I always get the odds. It's a conspiracy. Mm. Um, my recommended film will be City of God, a Brazilian film from 2000 and... Or is it 19-something? I think it's 2000s. 2000s. It's from the 2000s, anyway. City of God, it's regarded as one of the greatest Brazilian films of all time. Some people regard it as one of the greatest films of all time. Full stop. 
Uh, I've never seen it. Owen has seen it before. Years ago. Many years moons ago. ago. 2002. So we're going to, yeah, 2002. So we're going to watch it again. It's about crime in, I think, Rio. Um, It's specifically, the city of, city of God is not Rio de Janeiro. City of God is a specific portion of uh, Rio de Janeiro. Of, Rio. Disney, of right. Rio. I believe, I might be wrong there, but I believe it is a very specific part um, mm-hmm. of Rio favela or whatever. Yeah, I think I I don't even know. It might not even be Rio de Janeiro. Um, regardless, it's it's a very it is a real place. It's a very specific yeah. place. Um, and it's a film about that place. Sounds interesting. Yeah. Sounds sounds uh exotic. Yes. It's 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 a subtitle film for for any yes. of our <laughs> for any of our <laughs> Kulak cinema goers. <laughs> <laughs> it's film is subtitled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it sounds really good. So, and what's this film? Fifteen minutes in, text out. I don't know, breeze what, is going on. Well, I don't know. I didn't get it. I, I couldn't read the blade and the subtitles. Subtitles are going on too fast. <laughs> yeah, I was watching on double speed. <laughs> subtitles are going way too fast. I was having a breeze. Was happening. <laughs> nah. Right, will we leave it at that? We will. We will. All right. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Signing off. <laughs> I was about to say God bless. Lucky Slevin. Yeah, lucky number Slevin. Yeah, (laughs) goodbye.